A very good evening to all of you. It is my great privilege and pleasure to meet all of you today. And I wholeheartedly thank the Northeast Science Movement, NESM, for their wonderful initiative and the opportunity that they have given to me today uh, to talk to you all about the research needs in human health in Northeast India. So, uh, I start my talk with a very basic uh, information about uh, in biology that says that every evolutionary process leaves their distinct mark and trail on their genetic material. So uh, modern human beings, we are up roughly about 2 lakh years old and all the, uh, the genetic composition, the content has been transmitted from generation after generation and we haven't changed much except for some adaptive changes or some mutational changes. So we are uh, still uh, I mean, carrying the culture, the, the, the events that happened during the prehistoric time is all recorded in the genes and transmitted and that is how we also believe that uh, modern human beings are much more intelligent. The IQ level is much higher than our ancestors. Right. Yes. So, another uh, information about the Gondwana air theory, which roughly happened about 160 million years ago, uh, so which actually created the different continents, and we can see India drifting away and then hit, uh, hitting towards the oriental region. So, it is drifting, it is originally attached with Africa and then it drifts away and uh, it is colliding with the oriental region. So this is a major earth accident that had happened a few years. So um, again, biologists believe that the out of Africa hypothesis in the sense that humans evolved in Africa and have migrated to different parts of the world. Like the age when estimated the African genomes are much older compared with the North America or South America, right? And that is why this part of the world is called as Old World and this part of the world is New World. And uh, now we have an excellent roadmap of human uh, evolution and migration, right? So this is also based on anthropological evidences and the historical evidences. One more basic information in biology is now after the Human Genome Project and mo more and more understanding about the human genomes, we have come to know that almost right majority, 99.8% of the nucleotide bases, the A, T, G and C present in the genes uh, is exactly the same, having the same arrangement in all the humans across the world, whether we are an African. American, European or an Asian, our genetic uh, sequence, right, uh, arrangement remains the same. We differ each other by a very less fraction. Of course, this slide shows you the diversity of the major human races across the world. Uh, we, uh, I mean, each race differs in their, in its own culture, food, tradition and uh, adaptive features, which is also linked with evolutionary changes. We all know that the genotype uh, interacts with the environment to produce a particular phenotype. And uh, another interesting fact about the human genome is less than 2% of the genome codes for the proteins which are essential for our day-to-day -day activities. So here is one uh, example, uh, case example of uh, how Tibetans are able to thrive at high altitudes. So, uh, where the oxygen level is very low. So, uh, scientists have studied that there is a hypoxic gene, EGLN1, and a key mutation, right, allows the Tibetans to thrive at high altitudes. So, this is an interesting fact about understanding life and appreciating life. So, uh, here are two terminologies, like a single base change uh, from A to T or G to C or G to A or across these four bases, it can be a, uh, I mean, uh, transition or a transversion. So if a single base change occurs at a frequency of more than 1% in a particular population, then we can term that base change as a common polymorphism, uh, which is uh, 
uh, unique to that particular population and may not be harmful or uh, it, it exists right, in the population and runs in the families. Similarly, when a single base change occurs at less than 1% in a population, it is something that is very rare and can be considered as a mutation uh, in a particular individual or in a particular family that might cause some phenotypic changes. So it is very, very important for us to understand the common polymorphisms that are existing in a particular population and as well as also to understand the mutations that occur, which might be an adaptive mutation or can be a lethal mutation which can lead to a disease. So these are some of the uh, facts that uh, I'm going to talk about today. So before actually we uh, go into more deeper into human genome, few more uh, reasons why or how this uh, genetic composition or understanding the genes uh, to uh, for a better uh, human health uh, matters, right? So is then. Here is one slide which tells you about one size does not fit all. Uh, in the sense, like the percentage of the patient population for which a particular drug is ineffective on an average of the world population. So uh, we have found that uh, approximately 43% of the patients who are diabetic and take diabetic drugs do not get benefit from the drug. Similarly, only 25% of the cancer drugs works on patients and patients are benefited. So 75% of the cancer drugs are ineffective across the population. So the so same drug is not going to work on all the population across the world for the same disease. So this is uh, what this slide uh, tells us uh, about. So again, a study from uh, IGIB, uh, New Delhi CSIR Institute, uh, especially Dr. Sridhar Sivasubhu and Dr. Vinod Karyas, team of people, published in 2017 about the 5 fluorouracil, the chemo drug that is uh, given to most of the cancer patients after the operation is done uh, for various types of cancers as well. But there are worldwide reports which says that uh, more than 20% of the people uh, who are receiving this uh, chemo drug, 5 fluorouracil, die because of the treatment rather than the disease itself. So the uh, a key gene involved here is DPYD gene, which actually metabolizes this chemo drug and excretes in the urine or in other uh, excretory systems. Uh, um, and uh, they have reported four variants that are uh, can be tested for the 5 fluorouracil toxicity, which can determine or help the oncologist to determine the dosage of 5-fluorouracil uh, to be given and in the first instance whether 5-fluorouracil should be uh, given to a particular patient or not. Is the patient resistant to it or patient sensitive to this drug and even if he is um, resistant, what dosage could be given? So just by a simple uh, Sanger sequencing method, uh, within a span of 5 to 6 hours, the oncologist can be informed uh, whether 5 fluorouracil should be given to the patient or not and many lives could be saved. So uh, this is available for clinical testing in one of the ongoing projects of uh, IGIB, uh, GOMAD. Uh, so these are uh, again some basic concepts that uh, I'm going to introduce to you today that why understanding populations based on these genetic changes in terms of human health uh, matters. So, uh, mitochondrial gene mutation in different populations. So, in this slide, what we see is the name of the gene, in the second column that runs again in the right hand side. The base, this particular locus of this mitochondrial gene for healthy individuals as well as in a tumor sample or in a cancer patient. So, it has been found that there is a shift from A to G in these populations only uh, among the cancer or among the tumors. Similarly, the same gene but at a different locus, there is a change from G to A in a particular population. Uh, different genes, uh, that also there is a change from C to T and again it is population specific. For example, CO2, ATP6, CO3, ND4. The mitochondria has about 37 genes and many of these gene mutations have been identified not only for cancers but again for different types of diseases. 
So we can also see that in cytochrome uh, B as well as ND5 and ND4, uh, the base change or mutations exist in populations uh, from healthy individual to a cancer patient. I move on into the nuclear gene mutation. Uh, so here again, uh, for breast cancer, uh, there are about so many SNPs and uh, variants that are reported specifically for UK population. Uh, again, uh, DNA methylation pattern in breast cancer in Australian population, lung cancer, uh, the SNPs uh, differ among different populations. So um, this is true even in the case of BRCA1, BRCA2 genes, which are the key genes involved in the breast cancer uh, our carcinogenesis. So the same disease among different populations there exist different types of polymorphisms or SNPs. Uh, so uh, this is a, also a, one of the key reasons why diseases are so prevalent in a particular population uh, and uh, second uh, being why the same drug doesn't work across populations for the same disease. So these are some of the things that uh, you know, uh, the Northeast India should uh, look into uh, to a greater extent at this point of time. Uh, we have been uh, facing with, uh, for example, um, Mizoram as well as Arunachal uh, Papumpare districts uh, are some of the leading uh, districts and state in the uh, whole country for different types of cancers and uh, different cancers are uh, increasing and as we observe um, the cancers are occurring at a more younger age so earlier cancers used to be there only at the age of 50 60 or 70 years but now uh, even as low as uh, 15 years and 20 years or 30 years people get cancer in uh, and this incidence rate is increasing uh, as we move on and uh, the cases of pediatric cancers are also increasing to a great extent. So uh, this will be a good opportunity to uh, you know, look into some of, some of these aspects. So when we talk about cancer a little more in detail, uh, cancer is a multifactorial disease with various components, so genetics. Worldwide about 7 to 8% of the cancers are reported to be genetic. But again, it can vary from uh, population to population. Some populations may have a higher frequency and some populations may have a lower frequency of the genetic causes of cancer. So uh, even important factor to study here is environmental and lifestyle factors, uh, which uh, also can act as some of the driving forces for inducing cancers. So, uh, according to National Cancer Institute, uh, a normal cell, when it keeps on replicating and dividing, there may uh, occur a uh, mutation 1, right, and in a lesser number of cells or in a lesser percentage of cells. And uh, these cells, further when it keeps dividing, uh, may acquire a second mutation, again in a low uh, number of cells, not in all the cells, right, and a third mutation and a fourth mutation. And finally, even a single cell, if it has acquired sufficient number of mutations uh, in uh, different genes involved in the process of carcinogenesis or which can induce carcinogenesis, then it turns out to be malignant. So, uh, it is very, very important for us to look into the genes for either for early diagnosis or for deciding the treatment strategies or for prognosis to follow up the patients. Uh, so these are some of the interesting uh, facts that are emerging now across the worldwide populations as well. So earlier days, doctors used to treat the patients, but now uh, even the clinicians and doctors are well aware and well informed and highly knowledgeable uh, that they are looking into the gene mutations. Like uh, if uh, uh, breast cancer has to be screened in a particular individual, so, um, there is a panel of genes which involves about 40 to 50 genes and it is commercially available. So, the doctors ask for the report of the genetic testing and uh, they look into uh, what type of mutations are present and what kind of treatment strategies could be decided. So, we are uh, in an era of personalized genomic medicine. Every individual might carry unique variations in the genome or mutations or polymorphisms that can help the individual to improve the quality of life as well as in their families and the society and country or 
humanity as a whole. So uh, these are uh, some of the interesting features that have to be urgently implemented in the northeast part of India as well, uh, which also carries uh, genetic counseling as a component of this. So now I'm moving on to our particular study in Mizo population uh, with respect to gastric cancer, uh, because uh, Mizoram state leads again is one of the top uh, state in the whole country where gastric cancer incidence in men occur at a very high uh, uh, age adjusted ratio. So uh, in our study, in our basic study using Sanger sequencing data, we found that uh, in the mitochondrial gene, uh, cytochrome oxidase CO1, which is a universal barcode gene as well. Uh, there is a base change from A to G or A, I mean in different locus of the gene, the base changes happens uh, with reference to the reference sequence and it also affects the amino acid change because this is a protein coding gene and uh, most of the pathogenicity prediction softwares like a polyphan shift, pro1 or pumute and etc has classified these variants as pathological in condition in the sense it can probably involve in the process of gastric carcinogenesis and interestingly uh, all, most of these variants that we observed in the different locus are novel variants that have not been reported in any of the human gene mutation databases or TCGA like the cancer genome atlas or uh, there are wide range of uh, databases that host this kind of uh, human genetic changes uh, with respect to different types of diseases. But in com uh, when compared with the population, we found many of these variants are novel and have not been reported for other races. So this is where population specific or ethnic uh, ethnicity specific or tribe specific uh, variants can exist in populations which can also be one of the uh, major cause of various diseases in general. So uh, I further uh, tend to uh, take you into our study where we found that uh, again in the CO1 gene, uh, A uh, chromatogram, the sequence data represents healthy individual, uh, B uh, represents the tumor sample from a cancer patient and the C represents the blood sample from the same patient, from the same cancer patient, so matched blood sample. We found that uh, the healthy individuals has C, whereas uh, the cancer sample has G and the blood from the same patient, uh, tumor sample has G and the blood from the same patient also has the same uh, variant uh, G. So it helps us to again classify whether mutations existing in populations are somatic in origin or even germline in origin. If these variants are also found in blood sample, uh, it could be germline where uh, it is going to be inherited to the next generation as well. So this is how the uh, mutations within a small endogamous, uh, small tribal endogamous population could biomagnify and uh, then the frequency of these mutations existing in the population increases uh, with respect to uh, you know, a particular disease. So um, uh, what I have been stressing before is what is the, the new field of medical discipline that involves genomic information about an individual as part of his or health, her comprehensive health care supervision. So uh, it's a uh, very, very important growing field. Many institutions across our country also has been doing wonderful research like uh, National Institute of Biomedical Genomics in Kalyani, Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology in Delhi, um, ACTRAC um, in Navi Mumbai, uh, CCMB, right, CDFD, uh, ISC. So a lot and lots and lots of premier institutions and uh, as well as research laboratories across the country are now taking up this kind of studies to study about the Indian population and the cause of the various diseases. So molecular diagnostics is what uh, we have been touching upon slightly from the beginning of my talk and uh, so uh, there are now examples of various molecular diagnostics in cancer as well. For example, uh, tests available uh, for hum determining the genotype of HPV, right, which is the cause of cervical cancer. Similarly, for breast ovarian or and cervical cancers, BRCA1, BRCA2 gene panels are available uh, for uh, again uh, different types of uh, cancers, different types of 
uh, genes are mutations have been identified which can help in both early diagnosis as well as to determine the treatment strategies so uh, for example uh, keras and egfr are jo- those genes which are involved in lung cancer and which are druggable genes basically so the genes can be treated so that's the advantage another advantage of knowing about these types of gene panels so uh, talking about molecular diagnostics in oncology uh, like uh, hereditary cancer syndromes uh, there are various uh, assays that are now available in the open market and many of the leading hospitals in the country as well do this uh, test for the patients uh, similarly as a predictive marker right so what are the genes that uh, needs to be targeted uh, for circulating tumor markers non invasive uh, less in, less invasive kind of procedures as well as for carcinomas of uh, unknown primary origin and things like that so the clinical uses of molecular diagnostics right? um like for example um a person uh, can start with uh, for an early diagnosis am i at an increased risk of cancer do i carry some of the mutations that might involve in the process of carcinogenesis so a person can assess himself even a healthy individual at a young age uh, this is very very important in terms of counseling and adapting a healthy lifestyle so if in case a person ca- is found to carry some of these mutations he or she uh, could very well uh, get a good uh, knowledge support in terms of how to lead a healthy life how to uh, you know avoid the disease or how to postpone the disease so this is very much possible but genes are manipulatable environmental factors can influence the role of genes so by adapting a healthy gene, lifestyle and food habits we can uh, avoid in, even if the mutations are present even we can avoid the disease right so this is this risk assessment uh, is very very important strategy that one can take up so followed by uh, after the risk assessment so do i have cancer right so then various pathological testing and screening can go on for people who feel some kind of symptoms or disease and uh, in case so then uh, some treatment and then uh, uh, prognosis the follow up of the patient can also be uh, a part of the molecular diagnostic strategies so what type of uh, improvement happens in the patient how does the patient respond to the drug is there any adverse drug reactions Uh, is uh, i mean pharmacovigilance type of studies could also be taken up so then uh, predicting treatment response uh, should i receive a normal or lower dose of the drug that i am taking now based on the pharmacokinetics and uh, then how is my cancer responding to this treatment and ha- is there any chance of recurrence of the cancer to come back so these are all some of the strategies that are now being employed so coming back specifically to the northeast indian population right so outcomes in relation to genomic backgrounds so as i have been showing you some examples and some basic information about how genes can influence so uh, like uh, population associated diseases uh, could be studied like for example it will be helpful in disease prevention a lot of epidemiological and demographic studies involving ancestral uh, states genetic states food habits lifestyle habits Uh, should be researched upon uh, and uh, apart from that the early detection diagnosis and treatment of illness uh, involving uh, you know understanding the genetic predisposition and uh, bringing in personalized medicine for each and every ethnic group or each and every population uh, would uh, save the populations to and uh, make the population to lead a better healthy lifestyle or to improve the quality of life ultimately right so um, uh, this is the major uh, reasons that why uh, we have to uh, look into population associated diseases in the northeast now I- involving the uh, cultural habits the lifestyle habits food habits so the data could be integrated uh, the data uh, can be merged can be combined to better understand and uh, help people to have uh, a better quality of life so three approaches are advocated to be necessary to gain an upper hand on, on cancers and other diseases almost all diseases that are now linked with uh, genes like for example uh, 
uh, diabetes and even a communicable disease like tuberculosis. Earlier, we were only thinking that, okay, if we come in contact with mycobacterium, we get TB. But that is not the case. So each one of us are carrying mycobacterium in our blood system now. Uh, but why are we not getting tuberculosis is because the key genes involved in the immune system uh, is not mutated or is strong. So we are able to uh, defend the infection. But once mutations exist in an individual, then the person exhibit the disease. So three approaches are prevention with the epidemiological and risk factors and genetic counseling, early detection and diagnosis at the molecular level using various disease biomarkers. So not only DNA-based biomarkers, but also RNA-based and protein-based on metabolic, uh, metabolism-based, metabolic uh, com uh, compounds, right, uh, based uh, biomarkers are also now being researched upon and they are very, very popular uh, in many of the research laboratories as well as commercial entrepreneurial laboratories. And targeted treatment should be the very third approach, uh, having a, which will have a good prognosis, and uh, which means administering uh, drugs to the uh, right patients at the right time. So overall, it is all precision medicine, uh, uh, precision genomic medicine, um, um, medical care based on individual genomic, environmental and lifestyle differences that enable more precise way to prevent and treat the diseases. So, I am um, stressing upon creating a database of variants in both healthy and diseased individual is the need of the hour in a Northeast Indian population, for example, right? So, in every uh, Northeast India is also culturally diverse, it is also very rich in tradition, uh, has very good uh, environmental and uh, traditional uh, components. So, uh, understanding this will be uh, not only a knowledge source, but it can help a create a database of the human genome variations, right? Mm, so, uh, for example, um, this is a figure which shows you that individuals in the genome-wide association studies, okay, how many uh, individuals have been studied and these are the, uh, in general, the global population in, 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 in billions. So, uh, if you see population-wise, the Europeans have been very well studied, uh, the Africans also have been studied to a certain extent, uh, and uh, you know, uh, other South Asians and uh, um, other Asians have been very less studied as well in general. So, coming to our scenario as well, if you are a member of a lesser st uh, studied population and you go into a cancer clinic seeking help, some of the genetic tests on offer may not work for you because of your ethnic background. So uh, that is what I have been stressing about that every population have to be sequenced, even healthy individuals or diseased, I mean uh, uh, people with the disease, certain types of diseases and then to help and create a database which will be very helpful for the future generations to have an early diagnosis and to understand the cause of the disease uh, which can be also, which is also preventable. So, in this uh, scenario, uh, even our government of India through DBT New Delhi has initiated a project called as Genome India Project. In the first phase, uh, the project is going to sequence about 10,000 individuals. The project is spearheaded by Indian Institute of Science uh, Center for Brain Research uh, and there are about more than 25 institutions across the country which are involved in this project to sequence the whole genome of healthy individuals from from the different tribes and uh, uh, populations. But in the second phase, uh, DBT is also planning to take up sequencing of another 10,000 individuals. So, to, uh, because uh, to, to represent all the races uh, in the uh, Indian continent. So, uh, the purpose of this is uh, like, for example, it has a large medical genetic focus. Um, like uh, to identify variations in the genome that is disease causing and also to determine how individual genes play a role in health and disease because we all now know that our genetic constitution plays a major part in determining our lifetime health. So in research, right, it's all a cooperative endeavor, success is a cooperative endeavor, no one can succeed alone. Our success depends on how we work with others, how we collaborate and integrate and exchange knowledge and exchange the facilities and help for the benefit of the patients as a whole. So I would at this point of time thank um, uh, the 
my collaborators, uh, these are the clinicians with whom I work in Mizoram on different diseases. The first two panels, Dr. Jerry, Dr. Saya, Dr. Eric, Dr. John, Dr. Marchana, Dr. Zotan Kumar, Dr. Fela, Dr. Lili, Dr. Dinga, and uh, we have here uh, Professor Partha Majumdar, uh, who is one of the leading top experts in the country in uh, genomic uh, genomics uh, and uh, Dheeraj from ICGB, Dr. Ashok Verma from Attract, Dr. Sridhar and Dr. Vinod from IGIB and Savarkar from Jammu and uh, Dr. Ravi Kannan in Kachar has Cancer Hospital, Professor Bora from uh, Kanapara College of Veterinary Science. So uh, I collaborate with many of the clinicians and researchers who have helped us to work on these aspects and uh, moreover these are the panel of my students uh, who are also very hard working and who uh, who I mean do a good uh, genomics. So uh, I'm very thankful to DBT uh, uh, New Delhi for uh, various projects related with uh, human diseases, especially genomics, which gave an opportunity to collaborate with the collaborators across the country, and also for the state biotech hub and bioinformatics facilities that they had created over the past two one or two decades, which have really helped us doing the things. My, my last slide um, uh, attributing to Darwin, uh, so it is not the strongest of the species that survives, uh, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Yeah. So thank you and uh, thank you for, I, I once again thank uh, NESM for the great opportunity uh, they have given me today and I uh, would like to interact more and collaborate with them as well yeah so thank you very much